Hello my friends, so this is part three of my video response to the abortion matrix, so I hope you enjoy. What is it with you and movies? Is your entire interpretation of witchcraft based upon what you've seen in movies? A lot of the images that they're superimposing upon this opening sequence of the craft is not in the original sequence. I don't know exactly why they're doing this, but I do feel it's my duty to point this out. Mention Christianity versus witchcraft and negative images of the burning times, the Salem witch trials, and outbreaks of religious hysteria among superstitious people come to many people's minds. Yeah, maybe so, but I think actually what comes to my mind is videos like this. I have done countless responses to videos where the whole goal of the entire video was to make Christianity look like it is morally superior to this lower religion which they call Wicca. So all it is is just propaganda. It is just trumped up, self-glorifying, self-righteous bullshit. All these people who were hung and burned and accused of being witches were probably not. They were just innocent people who were tortured and forced to confess to crimes which they did not commit. It's here where we need to dispel the Hollywood image of the old crone of fairy tales, such as in Snow White and The Wizard of Oz. There's no doubt that many of those executed for witchcraft in the Middle Ages were innocent victims of gross superstition. Yes, I will have to agree with you, but we also have to see the modern witchcraft hunt. So this modern day witch hunt is what these videos are perpetuating. It is perpetuating this concept that people who practice witchcraft or practice Wicca or practice any of these so-called pagan religions are worshipers of Satan, worshipers of the devil, people who are deceived by the devil, of course, go against God or hate God. So already, 
we are guilty and we have to prove ourselves innocent. At least now we have a chance to speak and not be tortured. But what you are doing is not exactly the same thing that they were doing during this superstitious time. But considering how small the world is getting nowadays, and the fact that there are over 4,200 religions in the entire world, I still do not fathom why you continually pick out Wicca and paganism to be the religion that you decide to put the thumbscrews on. Such terrible measures are to be condemned as being in complete opposition to both the Spirit of Christ and the clear teachings of Scripture. Individuals came to me and said, well, see, it's Puritan laws that would have put people, put the witches to death the way they did because they just copied the law out of the book of Leviticus. The interesting part about that is the very same laws in the Old Testament require that you have to have an eyewitness of a crime in order to put someone to death. And, you, and without two or three witnesses, you can't put someone to death. And witchcraft by its very nature is an invisible crime. Therefore, you can't have witnesses. One of the things which I'm not too sure if the person who put together this little sequence is aware of, and I know that my audience is probably aware of it, but basically if you were accused of witchcraft, you were tortured. You were also stripped naked and they looked for witch marks. If you had a witch mark, then this was proof that you were a witch. You also had to confess that you were a witch. And then you had to name other people who were rich witches. So it's not like you went to a trial and there was actual evidence used against you or there were people who came to your defense. Basically, you were tortured and you confessed to being a witch. Once you confessed to being a witch, then you were punished. Thus, the actual Puritans had said it's one of those laws that you put on the book for the fear of God, but you know that very, un very unlikely will you ever be able to actually put someone to death for witchcraft because you can't see the crime. It was because the Puritans abandoned biblical law for nine months in New England that we had the Salem witch trials the way we did. If they had followed that, no one would have been put to death, even though there were two or three that were practicing in the occult. There were two to three who were practicing the occult? I have never, ever come across any of this information whatsoever. So you're telling me that during 1700s or 16 to 1700s, 16, 16th century, there were people who came from Europe over to America, infiltrated the Puritans who were well, pretty pure, pretty strict, and they were a very close-knit community, but somehow two people who were occultists got into this group and then later on were found to be witches. I've never ever come across this, and again, you have not given me any source or any proof or anything to support this claim. So, I'm going to dismiss it as you're full of shit. Interesting to note in the Salem Witch Trials, you talk about the fact that when you abandon God's law and you take up man's law as a replacement and not thinking the Bible has any indication for law, you pick up an hysteria. You're now guilty till proven innocent. And 10 of the 20 people put to death in New England were the leading Christians of that, that, uh, of that society. 10 of 20? So what were the other 10? They were not following Christian law? They were not good Christian leaders? In fact, Two of the older women were the leading prayer warriors in the town of Salem. So you're going to end up doing more harm than good when you abandon God's law. I think if we were going to put the European witch craze on a scale with the Salem witch trials, the Salem witch trials were not as severe as the European witch craze. There were probably 20 people maybe that were accused by your own account of witchcraft during the Salem witch trials. 
and I don't know the exact figure. I've heard high end, I've heard low end, but I'm pretty sure it was a little more than 20 people who were accused of witchcraft in the European witch craze. So are you telling me that all the priests in Europe, all of these priests were not following the Bible? With that said, however, it would be wrong to dismiss the genuine instances of demonically inspired activity that history does record. Okay, right there. That's what I'm talking about. How do you know that it was demonically inspired? That is your interpretation. You were doing the exact same thing that these people did back then. You are perceiving demonic activity and you are condemning those people who you perceive to be doing the demonic activity. The only difference with today is that you are not allowed to go out and torture them until they confess to being these demonically inspired people. Dr. Gerald Gardner, an anthropologist, spent the early part of the 1930s studying groups that practice magic around the world. At the time, he believed that witchcraft, as it had been practiced by pagan Europeans, had been extinct for centuries. But in the 1930s, Gardner discovered a group in Great Britain that were still practicing the craft. Fascinated, Gardner was initiated into the coven, studied its rituals, and eventually became one of the foremost experts and advocates for the ancient religion. At the time of Gardner's discovery, witchcraft was, in fact, on the edge of extinction. There were no known covens in the United States and some countries such as England had laws on the books outlawing witchcraft. On the publication of his book, Witchcraft Today, Gardner began to hear from other covens throughout Europe which had also survived. He spent the rest of his life writing on Wicca and promoting witchcraft throughout the world. Today, Gardner is regarded as a grandfather of modern Wicca and the primary force behind its revival in the latter part of the 20th century. One of Gardner's followers, Raymond Buckland, was initiated into the craft one year before Gardner's death in 1964. He introduced Wicca into the United States during the cultural sea change that was the 60s. Buckland, like Gardner before him, believed that in modern-day Wicca, the rituals of the ancient religion had survived. What exactly then is modern Wicca? This should be interesting. Let's see what they had to say about modern Wicca. So you want to find out about what modern Wicca is, and you immediately go to this movie called The Craft. Later on in this movie, you're going to talk about all the letters and all the correspondence that you had with Wiccans and witches throughout the entire world, and yet you're not using any source of this information, not one interview, not one letter, not one correspondence, not one email, nothing. Can first appears in an early manuscript of an Anglo-Saxon scribe in the alliterative phrase Wiccan and Walkyrie, witches and Valkyries. The word in Old English denotes both men and women using magic arts. Modern Wiccans claim that their name means wise one. Eh, no, he's not exactly correct here. Um, the term Wiccan represents the plural masculine. Wiccan, W-I-C-C-E-N, represents the plural feminine. Witcha, it's actually pronounced witcha, how we get modern witch from. Witcha is a singular male and witchy is singular female, W-I-C-C-E. So later at some point this kind of got the plural form became witches and the singular form became witch and was the name of a matriarchal leader of a tribe skilled in healing herbal lore and magic arts 
Although Wiccans deny using animal and human sacrifices in their rituals, they do admit that they pour out libations. Some female witches use their own menstrual blood in spells. So any time, for those of you who may not know, any time you see these ellipses or these three dots, that means that there is a section of text that was eliminated. So I went to the website where this supposedly came from, which is the Covenant of the Goddess website, and this may have been before they revamped their website, but I couldn't find this exact quote to see how they put this quote together. Other witches may prick themselves and offer a drop or two of their own blood, but the only blood a witch has the right to offer is her or his own. Do modern Wiccans view abortion as child sacrifice? Okay, so now we finally get to the meat of this video. First of all, I have to explain to you that abortion and witchcraft are two completely different things. Everybody who considers themselves to be a witch or practice, practitioner of the witchcraft may or may not agree with abortion. That is an individual choice. Abortion and witchcraft are unrelated. It is like saying that all witches have to be vegetarians or omnivores. It's not part of the religion. It is a choice. Witches and Wiccans can be Democrats, Republicans, vegetarians, not vegetarians, omnivores, pro-life, pro-choice. They can be all of these various different things. Just because one practices witchcraft or considers themselves to be Wiccan does not mean that they automatically have to adopt all of these political and social views. People still have their own opinions about things. Some people are pro-life, some people are pro-choice. It is still a individual choice. To be fair, we must say that in our research, we have received literally hundreds of letters and electronic communications from Wiccans around the world. The vast majority of Wiccans and pagans deny that they have anything to do with human or animal sacrifice. All of which they did not bother to use in any of these videos. Instead, they pulled this very old quote from the Covenant of the Goddess and the website in question found that to be so out of date that they took it off their website and replaced it with something new. So where is all this research? Where are all these correspondents, all these people you heard from around the world? Where is it? What did you do with it? You, did you just read it and toss it in the garbage saying, eh, that kind of goes against our agenda. They also deny that Wicca has anything to do with the abortion industry. What do you mean they deny it? First of all, why are you accusing them of it? You don't... <laughs> when I go down the street, I don't have to defend myself saying, I am not a murderer, I'm not a racist, and I'm not a thief. No one's going to accuse me of that unless I actually do something to make someone believe that I'm a thief, a murderer, or a rapist, or somehow have broken some kind of a law. We do not automatically have to defend all of these things. Only if we actually do something that puts us under suspicion should we then have to defend ourselves and say, no, I did not steal. It's pretty basic. Nor do they view abortion as a sacrifice of the unborn in their rituals. But all modern-day Wiccans freely admit that the modern religion is traced to ancient Celtic and Northern German people, the very people who practiced human sacrifice. Claiming that modern, modern-day pagans and Wiccans still perform some kind of a human sacrifice that is still questionable whether it actually happened 15, 16, 17, 100 years ago is pretty far-fetched. Although the vast majority deny that they have anything to do with the practice of... First of all, this image is from 
the Bible. Child sacrifice Wiccans are hard pressed. Witches and Wiccans are hard pressed. What do you mean? If you have any kind of evidence whatsoever from all these people, all these witches and pagans that you corresponded with throughout the entire world, right now would be a really good time to share that with us and support your claim. But the fact of the matter that you claim that you talk to all these people throughout the entire world and had these correspondence with them and you're not using any of that information tells me that all the information that you gathered from all these witches and pagans throughout the entire world does not support your claim. Press to explain a growing number of witches who argue that abortion is a witch's prerogative. This is the end of part three of the abortion matrix. So thank you so much and bless you.